politics, commentary, entertainment, sports, news, and opinion. Now, here is Steve Malzberg. The White House called that attack totally indefensible. It was. Um, the why we thought the ceasefire was so important. And um, Secretary Kerry has been working vigilantly at the president's direction to be a constructive force. Um, it's, a, it's a devastating situation. Israel absolutely has the right to defend itself, and we are Israel's staunchest ally. But you also can't condone the, the killing of all of these innocent children. All right, folks, uh, there she is. Some people call her Obama's brain. Uh, joining us now is Dan Hampton, retired lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Air Force and author of Lords of the Sky. And uh, good to see you again. Thanks. Great to be back. Thank you. How's the book doing? It's doing well. It, it made a few bestseller lists the first week. That's always a good mark. That's always right? a good thing. Yeah. 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 And it's a, it's a great story of fighter pilots and air combat from the Red uh, Baron to the F-16. Um, let's talk a little bit about what we just heard and the latest as we uh, take to the air here for this segment, CNN reporting that um, uh, there's been an Egyptian ceasefire proposal that's been agreed to now by the Palestinians as well. Uh, Mark Regev, the, uh, Palis the uh, Israeli spokesman for Benjamin Netanyahu, said this is the same exact ceasefire that we agreed to three weeks ago that Hamas said no to. So all the lives that have been lost could have been prevented if they would have agreed to it back then. So. Um, uh, th but but this 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 uh, administration, our administration, wanting a ceasefire almost from day one, when Israel had work to do because of the tunnels. The tunnels never would have been destroyed if they ceasefired on day one. The the, the rockets, you know, et cetera. What's wrong with our administration? Well, gee, where do we start, Steve? <laughs> I mean, I think we're going to need more than ten minutes for that. I I have a little different perspective because I lived in Egypt for fourteen months. I was an exchange officer with the Egyptian Air Force, so I, I have both sides of it. Okay, and I don't think this has ever been or will ever be something that outsiders, meaning us, are going to be able to impose or dictate. It's got to be solved by the people that live there and have to put up with it every single day. Yeah. So when you look at it from that point of view, we can help, we, we can suggest, but it's got to be something that both sides have to deal with. And the problem with Hamas right now is that there's really not anybody left over there in charge or with enough stature within Hamas to sit down at a table with the Israelis or anybody else and, and talk about terms. Right, and Israel uh, won't sit down with Hamas they because they're, they're a terrorist group. Um, but, I mean, is there anybody at all? I mean, you know, if you lived in Egypt, uh, you know probably better than I, uh, what the Palestinians teach their kids through their television, through their media, through their textbooks, the Jew is evil, kill the Jew, take Jerusalem with your blood. You know what they, how they glorify martyrs, uh, homicide bombers who kill women and children, they name soccer stadium. It's a culture of death. And, and, and Golda Meir said way, way back that the day the, Palis the, uh, Israel the Palestinians love their children more than they hate the Jews, then we'll have peace. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not pro-Israeli, I'm not pro-Arab. What I am is pro-American, and I don't, I don't want to see us get mired up in something else that, that, that we can't solve. Okay, what I, what I suggest, what I would suggest, is somebody over there who has a vested interest in peace, a neutral third party, and I think the King of Jordan, if he could be persuaded to do it, would be an excellent choice because he's half Arab, all right, his mother was British, all right, he lives over there, he's a king, he's a monarch, he's somebody that the Israelis have dealt with and trust, he's, something, he's somebody that the Palestinians, I think, the proper Palestinian party, would support and listen to. I don't know if you could talk him into it, but he would be somebody, I think, that would stand a chance of maybe mediating this. Well, he's afraid of uh, Hamas as much as the Saudis yeah, he, are. He has and, a lot to and, lose. And the uh, United yeah. Arab Emirates are, and uh, all those uh, Arab countries that have been silent in support of Israel, basically, while they try to wipe out Hamas, because they know they don't want radical Islam spreading to them. And, and, and he's, he's much, he's, you're right, and he's very close. I mean, he's, you know, he's a neighbor. And you know, having spent a lot of time in Jordan, too, they have a large Palestinian Minority, if you will, they want to throw Yasser Arafat the heck yeah, out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, they. I think that that would be a good, uh, a good starting point because until they stop fighting on both sides, uh, you know, it's it's going to keep going the way. But it you're is. not a, you're not making an, a, a, an equivocation here, or you know, between Israel and and even the, what the, the Palestinians are you? No, I, I I'm really not. I I would just say that there is enough error and distrust on both sides to go around. You know, you could turn the clock back 60 years and you could look at Pomak and the Stern Gang and Etzel, which were all Israeli 
groups. When they bombed the uh, the British headquarters Absolutely. the hotel, they you know, warned the everybody to get out as they do today. You're right. You're right. But I mean, from our point of view, that's the way we look at it. But from the other side, they were the terrorists. So I'm not taking sides one way or another. All I'm saying is that there's enough to go around over there. Somebody else has got to solve it this time, not us. All right, let's move on. I want you to hear what President Obama said the other day. Uh, first, he was asked uh, whether or not this is another Cold War with Russia, right. and he said no. And then someone asked him, uh, would, you, would you be uh, you know, amenable to arming the Ukrainians? They've been begging for it. They've been asking for it. And here's what uh, the president had to say. He did say that. Do we have it or not? If we don't have it, I'll tell you what he said. The point is he not uh, the Ukrainian capacity to uh, outfight separatists. Uh, they are better armed than the separatists. Uh, the issue is how do we prevent bloodshed uh, in, uh, in eastern Ukraine? The main tool that we have to influence Russian behavior uh, at this point is the impact that it's having on its economy. All right, so and I'm not going to arm them. They're already well armed. And by the way, if we give them arms, we don't want more bloodshed. So why should we give them more arms? I mean, they're begging. All we're giving them is rations, MREs. They, they need more arms. And he's like, no, because that's his whole philosophy. Yeah. You know, just wish for peace and it'll happen. Uh, you know, again, we could spend an hour talking about him and his lack of strategy or lack of policy or whatever. I will say that there's an old adage in the military, anyway, that you, you never fight a land war in Asia. Okay, well that sort of counts where that is and nobody has ever won or will ever win and it's also in Russia's backyard. I, I, Putin is a sneaky guy, all right? If you know anything about Russians, if you know anything about the KGB and you know anything about his background, he doesn't do anything without a reason. And I think that, that he is waiting for any pretext at all to move into the Eastern Ukraine. It may be to protect Russian nationals, it may be for security to protect the skies or whatever. It doesn't really matter at this point, I think, what we do. Okay? He, Obama was partly right. It is, economics is one way to put pressure on it, but it's not the Russian economy. All right? It's Putin's closest allies and friends because the Russian people are basically going to believe whatever they're told because right. Putin right. still owns the media. Right. Well, yeah. they've been told that the plane that crashed in the field yeah was uh, the hijack, the, 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 just the plane that disappeared that we put dead corpses on, dead corpses, corpses on and made it look like they shot it down. I mean, that's how crazy it is. Well, again, you know, we tend to look at things from our point of view through American eyes, and that's not, as you very well know, how most of the world is. And we can't conceive of a, of a country where, where we would just get spoon-fed one version of whatever, and that's, and that's what they get. And there's nothing in their history to indicate otherwise. I mean, before the Soviet Union, there were the czars. I mean, it's the same thing, different color. People are, they're used to being told what to think and what to do. All right, that's so, so, so you, you think the eventuality is that Putin will, will invade Ukraine uh, to a certain extent. Uh, why would he stop there? Why would he not go into the next country under the same pretense as you've just alluded to? I think he can get away with it as long as he achieves limited, limited objectives. He also knows that he only has until the sea change occurs in the United States, till the administration changes. And he's taking advantage of the fact that we have a lame duck president and basically a lame duck administration to do what he wants to. This is also why I think Israel moved into the Gaza strip, they were counting on our attention being focused elsewhere. They thought they could move in and solve their problems. Again, I'm not going to argue right or wrong. They're a bit surprised and taken aback now that the cameras of the world are focused on well, it. Well, well, the cameras are actually the cameras of Hamas are focused on it. They yeah. get most of their stuff from Hamas. The same people who claim, well, not even Hamas, uh, when Arafat claimed the Janine massacre, which never happened, the, the fake funerals we've seen over the years where the bodies eventually get up and walk away, yeah. uh, the kids that are carried in and out of ambulances multiple times uh, staging that. So when will the media and the world learn that you can't trust and I see all these figures, dead and injured, how many are civilians, Palestinian, uh, you know, how many times does the media have to be made jackasses of before they realize they got to confirm some things? You're absolutely right. And again, that's another reason, as long as things are as unclear as they are there, and they always have been, I don't really see that there's much that we can do, okay? And Israel, you know, Israel doesn't need our help. No, but what? when you said that, it, you know, right or wrong that Israel went into Gaza, I mean, Thank God they did because they discovered that the extent of the tunnels 
They prevented the uh, the Rosh Hashanah massacre, mm -hmm. which uh, which according to captured soldiers, they were going to send tons of sol of terrorists in and kidnap and kill, uh, you know, on the Jewish holiday coming out in September. And the rockets keep flying into Israel. So what are they supposed to do? What what I what I would do because terrorists are generally the the enemy of everyone. All right, I would I would actually find a way as ambiguous as that sounds, to try to get to try to get the Palestinian people to get rid of Hamas themselves. Because there be, isn't going to be peace either way without them, right? That, so that, would, be, them. that would be a good yeah. one. Dan, great to see you, man. Oh, you too. Thank you very Thanks. much. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it, Dan Hampton. Lords of the Sky, ladies and gentlemen. Check it out. And we're coming back with much more. But up next, it's going to be Gimme Five, and it's coming your way right here on the Steve Molsberg Show. We got a little social media. You want to talk to us? Here's how you might do it, folks. Watch.